Hi, this is Scott Schrader. Uh, we're here to talk about uh, the uh, 19th letter in the Hebrew alphabet called the Kuf. And the Kuf is a very interesting letter. It also has a numeric value of 100. You can see I have written up here. And uh, the Kuf, the actual meaning of the word Kuf is interesting because it kind of somewhat explains uh, one of the meanings of kuf. Kuf means the fullness, sunrise, sunset, or time. It can actually mean neck as well. And uh, what we see here in kuf, this, this word actually means neck, the word kuf. And the first letter uh, would be the fullness. Uh, think of it as the fullness. And, and the vav adds, puts things together, so of, and then the mouth. And so look at in ancient times look at you look at someone's mouth and you know when you eat something it goes down your throat down your neck and so the throat the neck is the fullness of the mouth um, and so this has uh, some connotations that are interesting in the sense where God uh, we have this idiom of being stiff neck and God tells Israel that they're stiff neck and tells us not to be stiff neck uh, and so uh, what happens when you're stiff-necked, it's kind of, you know, you have this visual, concrete language, right? It's visual. You, you set your jaw and you, you stiff your neck. I'm not going to do it. I'm rebellious. I'm, I'm going to be against you. I'm not going to do what you want. And so it has that idea that, that, uh, of this uh, fullness of the mouth, the neck. Um, and so it does mean fullness. It also means sunrise and sunset. Uh, at different times, the letter had slightly different meanings, but they're very similar in some sense, and we'll get to that in time. It has to do with time. So obviously, sunrise, sunset has to do with time. Uh, and it has to do with the fullness, because uh, you have the fullness of the day, from the sunrise to the sunset. The sunset denotes the fullness of the day. The sunrise denotes the beginning, uh, or a beginning of time. And so, we and so we have this idea of fullness. So it has to do with ripe fruit, the original symbol uh, and this fruit, fruit would fall off the tree, so it's the fullness of, of the fruit. It's the fullness of time for the fruit. There's a particular time when you, um, when, when the tree sheds its fruit, so again it, it gains new fruit, and that corresponds with the sunrise and the sunset. And so you have this, this time, this fullness, and this ripe fruit. Um, so let's talk about uh, holiness, because holiness is one of the main ideas uh, with this letter. In fact, uh, many rabbis would, would say that this letter symbolizes holiness. And it, there's the word Kadesh. Kadesh means to be set apart or consecrated. And so the idea with the letter here is you have this fullness, you, you have this um, neck, you have, you have an entrance of consummation. And so there's the fullness of the interest of our entrance of being set apart or consumed. Uh, when you're consumed, when something is consumed, it becomes part of that other thing. And so uh, when you set something apart for somebody, that thing has now become part of that other person, so to speak. Uh, it has to, it relates to them. Uh, and this uh, letter also can mean to divide in half. So it's divided, it's set apart. It's set apart. So holiness has to do with being set apart. To something. Now, God is uh, set apart in a way that uh, no one else can be set apart. He exists and we're all created. So it says that He has life in Himself and He gave His Son, or Yeshua, to have life in Himself. And no one else has life in themselves. Yes, God has given us uh, life ongoing through eternity, but He has always been. He just, he never, he never, he, he just has always been. I mean, that's a hard concept for us to grasp because we really can't grasp it in our, uh, in, in this body, in this fine, finiteness. We, we don't, uh, we, we have no perception of it, really. We can, we can talk about it in a nebulous way, but we really don't know what that means um, in reality. But we will kind of taste that in the, fu in the future. We'll enter into eternity ongoing, and so we'll taste it. But, and, and we have, in, in, in some sense, already done that as, as we have received uh, the Lord into our hearts. But God has always been. So he's separated from every all creation. He's separated from everything that's created as the creator, as the one that's always been. And so he's holy in a way that we can't be. And, and he tells us, uh, I am holy, so you be holy. 
you be holy. Now you be set apart. Uh, you be distinct. You be different. Uh, sometimes in uh, in Christianity, we uh, endeavor to be like the world and to to be able to relate to other people, but realize that you still are not uh, like that. You are separated. You are different. You have been consecrated to God, and you are not your own anymore. It says in First Corinthians. 6 19 you were not your own when you gave your life to the lord if you've done that and if you haven't you, you must you have to realize that you were not going to be your own anymore you are god's now and he has a destiny he has a purpose for you he's going to make you into what he's created you to be and this is the most fulfilling thing but sometimes it's painful because it's not what exactly what we uh want for ourselves uh or we think we i would say what we think we want for ourselves but what God wants for us really is the most fulfilling thing that, that can be for us because that's who we are. That's how we were made. We were made to be that thing that he is, he is bringing us into. And so uh, we can cooperate with the process, which makes it a little easier. We can, we can be stiff-necked <laughs> and fight against it. One way or the other, though, once you're here, you're going to become what he's, he wants you to be. I, I think the uh, flowing with him is much easier to get in step with him, as, as Paul puts it to get in step with him and what he desires for you. And so I just want to encourage you today, you are not your own. And so live that way. Live that. Live as though uh, Yeshua lives in you. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And so he lives in you. Let him live his life through you as he intends.